What's up, guys? Uh, today on Baby Steps, we are talking about your labor fears. Yeah. Yeah. What are the scary scaries that have your brain racing all around in circles at night? That's right. And hopefully, we're not just making everybody who wasn't scared more scared. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, we can kind of... We want to calm your calm fears. Calm some of those fears. This podcast will be like a nice bubble bath. Yeah. The bubble bath will be full of snakes, but by the end of the podcast, you'll realize that the snakes are actually bubbles. That's right. Or maybe they were bath toy snakes. <laughs> well, <laughs> but at first glance, you're like, oh, dear God, that's a bubble bath full of snakes. Oh, my God. I can't relax with a glass of rosé in there. I can't wash my Grey's Anatomy from the turb. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Uh, well, first I'll tell you a story oh. about something that happened to me oh my. a couple days ago. Okay. Uh, so Finn is adorable right now. He sure. is our chunky. Child. Yes. yes, Finn, our child. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, just all Finns in the world are mm -hmm. adorable. But Finn, our yeah, child. he's in a very adorable stage. About yeah. three months. He's almost of three age. months. Yep. Smiling. Smiling, which Big is eyes. very cute. Looks and like a Pixar movie. He does a little I bit. I thought he looked like that Pixar. His Incredibles. head looks like a little balloon. Jack with Jack? Yeah. Jack Jack. Well, both of no. our kids look like Jack Jack. Is Jack Jack the one that goes? No, that's Dash. Okay, yeah, Jack Jack. Baby Jack Jack. He looks like Baby Jack Jack. Yeah, the one that lights on fire? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and they roast marshmallows around. Cute. Are, is that right, Miles? Yeah, I think that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Confirmation from Miles. Yeah. It is Jack Jack. Um, yeah, both of our kids look like Jack Jack. Mm -hmm. That's just funny. Um, maybe all kids look like Jack Jack. They mm -hmm. did that on purpose. Yeah. Uh, anywho, Joke's on us. Anyways. Anywho, so Finn is also really chatty. Mm -hmm. I mean, not like actual words, but he kind of goes like, meh, mm -hmm. meh, right. meh. You so say, you, how's it going? And he says, meh. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I wish I could say that when someone asks me, how's it going? Blah. Meh. <laughs> <laughs> you hop onto a Zoom call. Hey, happy Monday, everyone. Meh. <laughs> <Blah. laughs> That's how I feel a lot of the time. I know. But I, I have to say something like, how is everyone else doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I got enough sleep last night. <laughs> <laughs> you actually probably didn't last no, night. No, not last night. Yeah, Ned took the baby last night. Yeah. Uh, he's only sleeping about six hours mm -hmm, at a mm -hmm, time, mm -hmm. which you would think would be enough for some people, but it's not for us. No, we're yeah. sleep hounds. Yeah, we, we really like eight to nine hours over here. Uh, which makes it very difficult We're having like, a child who doesn't sleep that that's much. That's right. Chocoholics, but for sleep. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we want it all. Yeah. <laughs> we want it all all the time. And it just makes us a little excited. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, anywho, so I was chatting with Finn. He was cute. And you were having a be beautiful, blissful Instagram moment. You even posted about it on Instagram. I really it was. was. Like he was babbling. It was adorable. It was so precious. I gave it a, a little heart. <laughs> I appreciate your heart. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Um, but so he was being so cute that I lifted him up over my head like mm -hmm. this. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, buh, 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 buh. Oh, buh, 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 buh. and I must have been massaging his belly or something like that because oh, no. he goes, Wah. and then he goes, Bleh. <laughs> oh, no. and because I was talking to him over my head like this, it falls right into my mouth. Oh no. Yes. He mama birded you. He mama birded me. Oh no. And you're my the baby mama bird, bird mama birded me. <laughs> I know. Can you believe it? Have you ever tasted breast milk? Yeah, yeah. One time. Yeah. yeah have for you tasted a video. warm breast milk? Uh yes. Yeah, I have tasted warm breast milk. Yeah. And what does it taste like? Um it's sweet. It's delicate. Uh it's made with love. Yeah. But I've never tasted regurgitated breast milk. Well, let me tell you it tastes like Regular breast milk. Oh. Uh, which tastes like a milkshake. Mm. Isn't that hilarious that breast milk tastes like a milkshake? It's like we are immediately giving our children sweets. Your milkshake does bring all the boys to the yard. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least our boys. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. All right. Ew. Uh, <laughs> Ew. Ew. Um, yeah, you're right. We are. I mean, they say that children do like they, their sweet senses are stronger. 
early as, on. and then it mm-hmm. kind of fades over time. That's yeah. why you know, maybe like my favorite meal is a nice, uh, nice medium rare Angus steak with a nice uh, peppercorn uh-huh. sauce, or maybe a balsamic glaze. Yes. But when I was seven, it was like M&Ms. candy. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm like, oh, candy's too sweet. Yeah, I get that. Well, what does that I say about me candy. that like my favorite meal is dessert? You're a child. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps I am a child. Hmm. I would say your favorite meal is anything with salt. That's actually true. Your yours went from sweet to salty. Mine went from sweet to savory. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah. Basically my entire diet is salty and sweet. Yeah. I don't, I don't fuck with the middle. Uh-uh. Yeah. Well, Let's welcome to everybody to Baby stories. Steps. Today <laughs> we are talking about labor fears. Yes. Um, not pregnancy fears as much. Uh, this is specifically what happens when you go into labor. Right, because now it's been a couple months, you mm-hmm. know. The the shock has worn off. You mm-hmm. can talk about it. For sure. Uh, a little more uh, eloquently rather than just I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I ever talked about it like that <laughs> I had a baby and it came out like <laughs> mama and, bear home and this is from <laughs> 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 uh, yeah that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to be the mama bear in the cave you want to give some context to that? Sure. We were at a birth class, and that's what they told us to do. They said, be the mama bear in the dark cave. And Go into the bathroom if you need to. This was a a birth class in Silver Lake, mm-hmm. which I for anybody that lives in L.A., that makes a lot of sense. For anybody that doesn't live in L.A., it's like the hipster uh, mecca yeah. of Los Angeles, where um, we took this birth class at like a, like a midwife place mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you know no judgment they were great mm-hmm. i i actually loved very it. knowledgeable yeah, yeah. And but they went through all of the labor interventions and all sort of stuff which actually that's something that before we even start talking about labor fears is if you are afraid of going into labor or afraid of childbirth uh the best thing that you can possibly do is educate yourself that's right mm-hmm. i mean so there's something called a birth plan Mm. which, you know, you could have it written down, you could have it in your head, you could tell your husband. You know, it doesn't even really matter where it is, but if you know what you want your labor to look like Mm -hmm. and you go into labor, whether that's in the hospital, whether that's, you know, a home water birth with a midwife, you know, whatever it is, if you go into labor with a plan in your head, you will be more relaxed, you will be more in control of your body and your, your, you know, your emotions and your anxieties. Uh, I think that was the number one thing for me that I was like, all right, I got this. Really? Yeah. Just making a plan, the simple act of yeah. writing it down or thinking about it. But also it- knowing what the what could happen, mm. you know, what the complications could be. If this, then that. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So. That's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know. Well, you wrote into. I like into, to think that I. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that I've I do. I do answer. I do answer times. the emails on, uh, you know, babystepsadvice at gmail.com. That's so right. I like to think I. Give a little good but advice every once in a while. Write in, Ariel might just reply. I might just reply. If it's something that I know the answer to and it's like a two sentence answer, mm-hmm. I probably will reply. I'll be like, girl, I got you. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly women. Girl, it's, yes. It's 99.999% women who write in. But yeah, this. Today we're looking at uh, labor fears, mm-hmm. and uh, we're gonna read some some of your emails at, from babystepsadvice at gmail Yeah, yeah. But uh, and then also I just sort of I gathered a lot of so there were there were quite a few fears that came through in multiple emails, and mm-hmm. so we can just go down and uh, and just talk about those fears. Yeah, you made like a scatter plot. I did make a scatter plot. <laughs> I did. Yeah. A little pie chart, some graphs. I like yeah, some graphs. I like I like math. I like I math like graphs. I like graphs. <laughs> okay, this one I pulled out of all the rest of them because the title is "Terrified of Childbirth." Oh my! I know. 
I know. So I'm gonna, can, give me a name. Deborah. Deborah. So Deborah says, hi, Ned and Ariel. Congrats on the newest addition to your family. Uh, I wanted to email you guys some advice. I am terrified of having kids. She's advising us. Oh, mm -hmm. oh, she's asking for advice. She's asking for advice. Mm -hmm. I actually, I recently I'm have been down. getting a lot of advice about breastfeeding, mm. um, which I desperately appreciate. I am. Yeah. We are certainly not uh, experts by any means. And the update is it's it's going a little better. It's right? going a little better. What, what were some strategies that you used that kind of helped out? Well, okay. So one of the things that I learned was okay first of all i needed to i wasn't pumping enough mm. and so i needed to up my supply and you can actually up your supply once your uh you know once your milk supply has been established you can just uh breastfeed more pump more and your body will respond by mm. making more milk all right um you know, it, it, it does take a while. It takes, you know, several weeks and you also have to take care of yourself. Mm. That's one big thing is like drinking water. Mm. Uh, that is something when, when you have a newborn and you are just dealing with a newborn all day and you also have a toddler. So you're dealing with both. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes you forget to take care of yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so you can forget to drink water. You can forget to eat fruits and vegetables. Mm. Um, these are all things that I do. I forget, I, I, I'll like finish my water bottle that's next to the bed over there that you can see. <laughs> um, I will finish that water bottle and then I will have no water for six hours. Mm. Yeah, you know, I'll, and so I just won't drink water. And the only way to get water would be to wake up a sleeping baby that is laying on you, mm -hmm. which is the worst thing in the world. It's adorable when it's happening, but then yes. you do, after a time, feel trapped. You absolutely feel trapped. And the only other option is to go, Ned! <laughs> Mama needs a drink! <laughs> which you also hate. You're like, but you're so sweet about it. You come in and you're like, yes. 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 What can I do for you? What can I do for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but it's going better. So what I've been doing is I have been breastfeeding Finn more. I've been pumping the same amount, which is about three to four times a day. Uh, but I have been, uh, you know, latching him. And uh, what I have found is that he latches better, obviously, when he's hungry. Mm -hmm. uh, so right when he wakes up from like a good nap, mm -hmm. I will, uh, I'll breastfeed. Um and uh, and I've been breastfeeding him in the middle of the night. Really? Yeah, that's I mean, I, been great. I knew that, but I'm you know yes. getting the conversation yes. going. So yes, I have been breastfeeding him in the middle of the night, and it's been great. Uh -huh. uh -huh. so, so why why uh, yeah? So you don't get that like breast milk spilling everywhere and kind of frustration that you were feeling before? No, I definitely still do. Um, Finn's a little bit older now, so he has a better latch, and he can actually sort of accept more milk. Oh. Than previously, so, so it's like uh, he was growing. He just needed to grow into the boobies. He needed to grow into my letdown, mm -hmm. which is strong. Mm -hmm. The letdown is strong with right. this one. And now he's a, a guzzler. Uh yeah, he is. <laughs> um, I mean, he's he's a good eater, but um, yeah, I mean, there's still breast milk everywhere, but. Whatever. That happens when <laughs> bottle feeding too. Yeah, exactly. You know, it, in some ways, you just. You, when you're feeding a child, there you just accept that there is going to be yeah. food everywhere, and it's become part of the post bath pre bedtime routine for you, which I've noticed makes you feel very like yeah. connected with him. Yeah. You've been saying we're going to have some boob and it's going to be really nice. And yes. You know, I'm not one of those women who has had the perfect breastfeeding experience. I know that there is no perfect breastfeeding experience. Mm -hmm. um, I was actually recently listening to the Ballinger's podcast. Mm. Um, and they and uh, uh, Jessica was talking about her breastfeeding experience. Um, and it was fascinating. It is so fascinating to hear other women's experiences. Um, Colleen was on there, too, talking about hers. Uh, and it's actually very similar to mine, huh. uh, where she was also an overproducer. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, it's like everybody has something that they're dealing with, you know, like nobody has a perfect experience. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. There is no perfect experience. You just, you just got to feed your kid. It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, exactly. It is what you make of it, really. Yeah, totally. 
those routines can be so set in stone. I mean, I wonder how other parents listening deal with that uh, idea of routines that stay the same or change. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to change your routine, how do you do that in a, a way that doesn't disrupt everything? Right, exactly. I mean, especially in quarantine, I feel like, you know, you just, you're, you're home all the time. And so mm-hmm. you sort of get set into a routine. Yeah. And how, how are parents then going to deal with like kids who are going to school for the first time? And well, anyway, we got way off course. Oh yeah, we sure We did. were in the middle of reading an email. Mm-hmm. I will start again. <clears throat> Terrified of childbirth. Right. I wanted to email you guys for some advice. Mm. I'm terrified of having kids. Uh, My partner and I have been talking about if we would ever want a baby or not. I've always been the type of person who wanted kids, but now I'm really thinking about it and starting to realize that being a mom is something I've wanted for a while. I picture having a child, what their life would be like. I've been thinking about their face, what their personality would be like. And I think that bringing a life into this world would be amazing, but I'm absolutely terrified. Uh, So this writer has spinal issues and is worried that pregnancy would be painful, Mm. which is uh, absolutely a huge fear. That's a number one fear. Um, And also don't even get me started on the fears when I think of childbirth. The pain of an epidural, if I choose to have that, then the excruciating pain of having a baby, I'm scared of it all. So pain is a huge one. My partner is so supportive and I know that he will be with me the entire way, but it still worries me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's I. That's probably the number one fear is pain, pain of childbirth. I absolutely. Mean, that's the most painful thing out there. As you know. As I sort of know. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, yeah, it says, how would I get over this fear? Is it all that bad? Of course, I know having a baby is painful. I've seen the video, Ned. Mm. It didn't help. Strap some electrodes to your taint, baby. <laughs> but what do I do to prepare myself? Well, the way it works is we each slap each other in a series of escalating intensities until it is the most pain we feel we can take for the day. And then we take a break and then do it again next day, but try and go a little bit further, a little bit harder. (laughs) Um. (laughs) Very good, doctor. Thank you. Yes, yes. Let me know if you want to sign up for my experiment. (laughs) For my childbirthing class. This is about pain. (laughs) well let's talk about pain um so childbirth is painful yes that's a given i was going to say part of the fear was about the epidural but isn't the thing with the epidural is it's supposed to prevent the pain you're telling me that epidurals themselves are painful that's too much well let's 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 put those apart so there's there's the pain of uh of childbirth itself Mm. um but the fact is that when you are in childbirth Uh uh there is a lot of things that happen to your body. Oh. There's a lot of hormones that are going through your body, and there's a lot of adrenaline. Oh, um, yeah. Which is part of the reason why many moms forget about the pain of childbirth. Really? It's because all that adrenaline going through your head, it's like a, it, it's like a fight or flight You're type like, of thing. Gah! Yeah, exactly. And then after it's done, the the adrenaline like recedes, and you're like, oh, I have a baby now. Huh. Isn't that interesting? That but, is interesting. But that adrenaline helps you get through the pain of childbirth. So you don't really remember it being that painful because you, don't it, remember you it being just that remember it as like, oh! Yeah, but also, your, I mean, your body is made to do these things, mm. you know? That, and I so, feel, is the number one thing that could allay people's fears is oh, to yeah. remind them that your body is made to do this. Billions of babies that have been born, yes. and your body is made to do this. And but, billions of mothers who have been through childbirth. I mean, this uh, Deborah mm-hmm. has some spinal issues, it said. Yeah. So, you know, I could see how she would be more concerned than perhaps someone that doesn't have spinal issues. Absolutely. Yeah. The pain is it doesn't last forever. Mm. That's the thing, is that the pain of childbirth is, is over. In. Pain is temporary. Pain is temporary. Glory is forever. Pain. Well, the pain is temporary, but also while you are in labor, the pain comes and goes. It's not That's like you true. have to deal with a constant. I did not realize that when you know before you had the baby and before we right. did the childbirth and classes. Right. Well, I thought it? it was just sort of a steady 
constant escalation of pain. Uh -huh. It's really more like it comes in waves every five minutes. Right, exactly. And so, you know, you have a minute of pain and then you rest for four minutes. You know, like mm -hmm. that's kind of, is that how you would have described uh, the pain? I suppose, yeah. yeah. I don't know about rest. I don't know about rest. We do rest yeah, relative yeah. to the pain level of exertions. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's the contractions are not constant. They yeah. happen for about uh, one minute every five minutes. Yeah, and also knowing that, you know, the word contraction, mm -hmm. they're like, the what a contraction <laughs> is, <laughs> <laughs> what a contraction is, is it is your uterus contracting, mm -hmm. you know, and that's where the pain comes from, is your uterus kind of like squeezing like a muscle uh, because it's trying to get a baby out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just, it's not pain for no reason. It's, it's active pain, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like. It's working. It's like you're working. Yeah, you're, you are, it's like an eight hour workout. Oh my. You know? Oh boy. Which, you know, okay, so. Uh, our coach JP says sometimes when uh, when we're like well when when we used to work out at the mm -hmm. gym, <laughs> but you know he would say something like you can do anything for thirty seconds, mm. you know, and I kind of took that and brought it to childbirth, mm. thinking to myself like I can do this, I can do anything for a minute, I can do anything for five minutes, you know, it's it's that kind of mindset that you go right. into. Some mental determination. Sure. Yeah. And then there are ways to get rid of the pain, like you were saying, an epidural, mm. uh, which is a, you know, a, a massively common uh, way of, uh, of pain control. So what does that pregnancy. feel like? I mean, you I don't know. One, I have never I honestly, I, I not for lack of trying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted an epidural in our in my second pregnancy with Finn, but it just happened too fast and uh, I couldn't get one. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've done a fair amount of research. Well, I on guess it. I could, I've had a spinal tap. Oh yeah. Pr procedure Tell before. So that. I could explain. Uh, it's just, it felt like getting a shot. It okay. happened to be in my lower back, which was a rather uncomfortable place to get a shot, mm -hmm. but still it just was the tiny prick of a shot. Mm -hmm. And, and did, did they numb it first? They did. So numb they it first. they numb the area first, uh -huh. and then give you an uh, a shot in your back, mm -hmm. which uh, which numbs your your whole uh, the whole lower half of your body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And and what did that feel like? I don't know if it numbed the whole lower half of my body. It's not quite the same as an as epidural. An epidural. <laughs> but I think what what uh, what people are when it comes to epidurals. Uh, you, for example, were concerned about the needles and about the, you know, the I poking was very pain. concerned about the needles. Yeah, because they do take it. It takes a long needle to get it mm -hmm. into the the right place in your back. Yeah, but it felt like just a normal shot. That is a it's it's a little bit of pain to prevent mm -hmm. later pain. So that can be an option for people. Absolutely. And and from what I've heard that that is kind of the um, the experience that many women have mm -hmm. uh, is that, you know, they numb the area and then uh, the epidural is is just a like a small, a small uh, pressure yeah. shot. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it, it is a significant decrease in the pain of the contractions. Yeah. Now, your chosen method was nitrous, mm -hmm. which I'm sure maybe a lot of women who don't want to get an epidural but do want something to yeah. take the edge off uh, right. might so consider. Do you I want did, to walk through what that's like? Absolutely, yeah. I So I did nitrous, which it is, it's laughing gas, right? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Uh, so with my first uh, labor with Wes, I, uh, the hospital that we were at offered nitrous mm -hmm. and it's basically you have a gas mask mm -hmm. uh, that, that whenever you needed it, you would hold it over your face. And it it didn't get rid of the pain, but it dulled mm -hmm. the pain. But you could still, you know, perceive things. Absolutely. And you could still sense things. Oh, and absolutely. you could stand up yes. if you wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Labor like a mama bear standing and swaying yeah, in I mean, the bathroom. There was, there was no. While your husband made a fantasy football trade. <laughs> The Which, more you remind um, me of that, the the more I'm like, what? what why am I doing this? <laughs> you were in the bathroom. If you had called, I would have been there for you. Oh but goodness. I was just sitting outside the bathroom with nothing to do. Uh -huh. 
And so I was texting my web friends, making the trade and update for all the people. That player helped me make the fancy football playoffs, so was it worth it? <laughs> okay. You can email me at okay, babystepsadvice at gmail.com to, to tell me if yes. <laughs> 0.1% of boys are like, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> oh my goodness. So basically, uh, the nitrous doesn't actually like numb anything. It doesn't numb anything at all. It it's there's a very big difference between like the numbing of the epidural and the dulling of uh, of nitrous mm-hmm. where nitrous almost just made it like like 15% easier which is significant when you know when you're like comparing uh like the full on pain to 15% less. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but if, from what I've heard about epidurals, um, there are many different types. You can get, uh, if if the place that you're at offers an epidural, um, you can get like walking epidurals, which make it so that it's n- not as numb and mm-hmm. you can move your legs mm-hmm. and, you know, it's almost like a, a dulling of the pain That's rather nice. than a complete numbing of the pain. Yeah, because it was nice for you to be able to stand up. And I'm sure a oh, lot yeah. of women out there are wanting to make their birth plans in a certain way. Yeah, I was a very active laborer mm-hmm. where I Lots wanted to Yeah, I wanted Lots to like Sheeran. I wanted to squat, I wanted to move and like bouncing on balls. Bouncing on balls. Yeah, I Yeah, w- oh, you didn't have time to bounce on balls with Finn. I had no time to do anything we with Finn. We didn't even bring a ball. Uh, we didn't even have time to like get stuff in the car. I yeah. know. It was rough. Yeah. Um Okay, so there is another fear that I have heard from friends. Oh, yeah? Um, that is that the epidural oh, yeah. uh, will cause some sort of, like, paralysis. What? I that's, know, I know. That's and, ridiculous. And I was, I was hesitant. Real? Is I was, that a real thing? Okay, I was hesitant to talk about this because, you know, there are probably many women out there who have never had that fear in their life, and now they do. Uh-oh. Right? Snakes in the bathtub. But the fact is that... It is, it's, it's more of a myth than you think that, you know, it has happened, but one of the studies that I read said that one in 250,000 women have any sort of like perceived lasting complications from an epidural. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And that could be just pain at the injection site or like, Mm. you know, anything at all. Wow. And so paralysis is extremely, 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 extremely rare, huh. you know? And Deborah also mentioned uh, spinal issues. Uh-huh. But if you talk to your doctor and your doctor gives you the okay, then you should be good. Right. That that could, that just goes back to what we were saying at the beginning where you have to uh, educate yourself. Yeah, you that's know? right. So schedule that prenatal appointment. Get in there, get some information. I know. Have a nice conversation. I feel like, I feel like, uh, get to going with baby creation. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every episode we're just like, have a baby. It's great. No, yeah. Babies are fun. You yeah. can do it great. Yeah. But I'll, 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 you know, don't have a baby if you don't think that you want one. <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> Babies are tough. So moving on to another fear. Uh, so when the baby's head uh-huh. is coming out, yep. Describe the pain. Can you can you visualize the pain? If it were a color, what color would it be? If it were when the baby's a coming shape, out, what shape would it be? The the color is red. Okay, absolutely red. Yeah, it's Angry. it's like fire. Fire pain. But I mean. The, the the actual time that the baby is coming out of your yeah. vagina yeah. Uh, lasts like maximum 60 seconds. So it's sort of like a, like a, <laughs> I don't know. It's like holding your hand over a candle for a second. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay. You know, it hurts. Kind of like a burning, yeah. but momentary. Yes. That's the actual like ring of fire crowning. Yes. Uh, That's what they call it. They call it the ring of fire. Moment. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, that, yeah, that brings us to, to another fear is, is tearing. Mm, sure. um, and 50% of women do tear. Seems um, like a low percentage. It does seem like a low percentage. It means I know. 50% of women don't tear. I know. Wow. So 50% of women don't tear. Um, and 
it, the good news is that the longer your labor is, uh -huh. the less likely you are to tear uh, because kind of it gives your body time. a chance to kind of stretch. Right, and, right, right. Yeah. Um, common practice a long time ago, um, and by a long time, I mean like 30, 40 years ago. Oh, okay. I was imagining like a medieval midwife. I mean, probably. Saying, I don't know about it. I, feel like, I feel like childbirth in medieval times was even more natural than it is now. Yeah. You know, where it was just like you squat out a baby. <laughs> right, right, right. And if you die, <laughs> sorry, okay. we won't go there, but I'm sure. Lots of people died. That's another. In that's an actual fear. I mean, you had that fear. Oh, I sure did. Anytime I saw blood, I was like, "They're both gonna die. I'm gonna be left all alone." Oh, sweetie. <laughs> yeah. What have we got next? Well, let's see. C-section. A C-section. Yes. yes. Another thing that we have never had. Beyonce did it, and therefore really can't speak to. No. But. I looked it up. Oh, you did? Oh, what does it say? <laughs> well, it says uh, one in three women who, mm. uh, you know, go into labor have wow. a C-section. That's pretty high. Whether they choose to do it, them, like, they, oh, sure. they've they decided going in that their birth plan is, I want to have a C-section. Mm -hmm. um, Wake which, me up when it's over. Absolutely. No judgment. You know, every to each their own, everybody has their own journey. Um, but, you know, there are also a lot of women who go in not thinking that they are going to have a C-section. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing leads to another. And there are delivery complications um, that mean that you, you know, that it is the safest possible option to wow. have a C-section. You know, in the labor and delivery room, when it's ready to go, it turns into a, like, surgery area. Oh, absolutely. Just so they can be ready to do it, a C-section, mm -hmm. on a moment's notice. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we're not giving enough uh, airtime to women who give birth at home mm -hmm. uh, because there are a significant amount of people, especially, I mean, outside of the U.S., sure. who do give birth at home. And, yeah. you know, I mean, uh, it's people been giving birth at home for thousands of years. Absolutely. And I mean, honestly, in some ways, it is my dream to give birth at home. Really? Cause I, oh, yeah. I feel like it would be. You know, such a, an empowering experience mm. to, like, be so in charge of your own labor. Yeah. Um, because that's another fear that, that women have is not being in charge of their own body mm. when they go into a hospital and into a delivery room, mm -hmm. you know? That's where the birth plan comes in that's handy. That's where the birth plan comes in handy. Yeah. But, you know, that was one of the things that they kind of uh, scared us about when we were doing our birth class mm. is that... You know, if you it, that that you could sort of lose control, mm. and that there could be some kind of uh, complication that then you know, with it, without even realizing it, your your labor has just gone from you know, like I'm I'm giving a, I'm having a vaginal birth with no epidural to I'm having a C-section. Wow, you know, and that can be really traumatic for some women. And there are so many stories out there. I mean, even just within the people that I know, um, you know, Rachel. Do you know Beyonce? I yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. She's a she's we're we're both from Houston. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. H town. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> um, I mean the yes it it I think it would be a it would have been a dream to give birth at home and i think mm. for many women it it is a very uh, empowering experience to do like a water birth with a midwife mm -hmm. um but there are you know there are complications with that too and i know that midwives are equipped to uh to get a, a woman in labor to a hospital if they need to be mm -hmm. you know that is that is part of their birth plan right. is is if needed they get them to a hospital mm -hmm. Uh, so know. how do you uh, take that control back and, you know, uh, kind of have the confidence that you can maintain control over things? I guess, do you just make mm -hmm. a birth plan and include part of it, knowing that if this, this or this happens, that it'll that I'll have a C-section and I'll just have to be OK with it? Right. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, uh, taking control of your your you know your labor and delivery mm -hmm. is the number one thing that i think can can really make a a woman in labor feel empowered wow you know you go in and you say 
I definitely want that epidural. Yeah. And then, you know, go from there. Or mm -hmm. you say, I definitely don't want that epidural. And then you go from there. Mm -hmm. And you can change your mind too, mm -hmm. you know? But uh, <laughs> Uh, as I know, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you. As did. I know, I told. You were like, no, I don't want an epidural. It's going to happen naturally. And then with both births, there was a point where you were like, give me the epidural. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they both said, it's too late. It's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Well, I mean, I also think I shared my birth plan with you. Yeah. You know, and so there was a period. Of, there, there, there was a point in labor when i was like i want the epidural and you you know you said softly to me ariel you wanted to have this baby without an epidural right your partner can remind you like of what you i know that you are in pain were. right now but <laughs> i think that after this is over you are going to be happy that you did what you wanted to do and were you i was mm. i was happy mm. um daddy approved daddy approved <laughs> that's right but yeah and you know it, it goes back to educating yourself yeah. where knowing what the options could be if something happens, you know, if they discover that you have preeclampsia and you what absolutely, I think we should probably do a little bit more research on that All before right. I talk about that <laughs> <laughs> because I do not know yeah, right off the top of my either. head. I just know that it is uh, a very, it's, it's a serious, um, you know, labor complication mm. that could lead to a C-section. Wow. Um, you know, but the fact is, that a c-section you know one in three women can have a c-section and it is a major surgery uh you know so so there are those fears mm. um but it does happen and but you know doctors do c-sections every day so mm -hmm. don't be afraid of surgery okay so uh, one of the kind of last groups of fears that i have is like labor complications with baby Oh. So some women are very afraid of like cord wrapping. Yeah. Um, I'm afraid of that. Yeah. And like, you know, forceps, things that, that, that people might have to use to pull the baby out, vacuum, that sort of thing. Um, we learned about that in our birth class. And um, I learned, honestly, that they aren't used all that much. Yeah. Um, that, you know, in a, uh, in a delivery that is proceeding fine, uh, you shouldn't have to pull the baby out with, you know, right. forceps or something like that. Yeah. It was, it was used a lot more maybe 40 years ago or something so like forceps, that. So uh, forceps, let me get this straight. Forceps are like big, like little, little tongs that you yank the baby out. <laughs> I, I, don't I don't know if I would use it quite right. like that. Let me, let me refresh. Uh, forceps are like little tongs that you gently ease the baby out with yes yeah yeah exactly they're like uh yeah they're like tongs mm. that you and so they were pull used the baby more 50 years ago and mm -hmm. really all right so our hospitals more patient now with their i think patients? more patient there are <laughs> drugs that can um you know like pitocin and mm. uh uh things like that that kind of speed the the, the labor mm -hmm. along so the baby doesn't get stuck there yeah yeah exactly and um, one thing that, that women who have never been in labor don't know is that the second you get to the hospital yeah. and, and, and also they do this when you're in labor, like, uh, with a midwife or something like right, that, right. if they are at all worried that mm. some, that there is going to be some sort of complication with your baby, they strap on a baby heart monitor. Mm. And oh yeah. So, I remember you had that. Yeah. Right. And the baby, they're You don't even realize heartbeat. that you have it after a while. Beep, yeah. Beep, beep. Yeah, but it listens to the baby's heartbeat, and like the second something goes awry, it's you know then it's like okay, we got to check and see what's going on here. Mm -hmm. You know, like do we need to speed this along? Does this need to happen? Does this need to happen? I mean, we when Finn came out, he had the cord wrapped around his shoulders, right? Right, and your doctor rather than having you stop pushing for five minutes, said, okay, mm -hmm. let's get one more big one. Yeah, and I was exhausted, when... could not push anymore. And she said, no, you have to push now. Because, we, you know, he had the cord in a place that could have been dangerous. Yeah. And that's what doctors are for. That's mm -hmm. what midwives are for. Right. Letting you know when you need to really help and keep that baby going. Yeah, Really absolutely. need to push now. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I mean, it all goes back to to 
knowing what you are walking into. Here's a fear that I believe you had. Uh, I certainly would have had it. It's uh, don't you poop okay. when you're when you're having the baby? Don't you like poop everywhere? Uh, <laughs> Isn't that a thing? Because you're just straining so hard. That's a really, Everyone really good says, question. Push, and what if you push out the wrong hole? That's a really good question because you use the same muscles to push a baby out that you do to <gasps> push poop out. I knew it. Uh huh. And the answer is, uh, yeah, sure. I was scared of pooping mm-hmm. on the table, and maybe I did. I honestly don't know. Honestly, <laughs> you would know better than I would if I pooped. On my baby. Yeah, I don't know if I could tell. It was there was a mess of a lot of stuff going on down but there. You know what happens actually is um, right like when you're in early labor. Yeah. Uh, one of the signs that you are in labor and and like go, uh, sort of that this is that the whole thing is progressing really? is that you shit your brains out. Really? Oh yeah. <sighs> That's what you were doing while I was doing fantasy football trades. Well, no, I my <laughs> mucus plug was coming out when okay. you were doing fantasy football <laughs> trades. But that's kind of what happened. Whatever it like, was, the door was closed and it was like, do not go in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you kind of you kind of expel everything from your body uh, when you go into labor. That's cool. In your preparation. Like, Get ready. Yeah. Cancel my meetings. That's kind of what happens is you're like, okay. We're doing it. We're doing it. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Yeah. And so I'd like to say there was nothing left for me to to poop when I was pushing out a baby. Uh, But from from stories that I've heard from like people who have like delivered babies. Yeah. Like it happens. And, you know, they just... Just, just scoop it to the side. Yeah. You know, nurses are just like, got it. Huh. It happens all, yeah, I'm sure it happens all the time. Huh. So, I don't know. But it's not a fear. At at that point, like. It's like the you least. Have, you have other worries. things to be worried yeah, about. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Yeah, the biggest thing that I would think that would give listeners out there uh, some hope and some confidence that this bubble bath full of snakes is really just a, a bubble bath and there are no snakes and it's just bubbles and it's a delightful bath and you can watch Grey's Anatomy. Uh, is that your body was made to do this? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it was, it is. Uh, and you can do it if you choose to that, you know, you have to believe it's, it's, a, it's about, Believing in yourself and, you know, going in with the confidence that you got this. You got this. That your body has, your body has this handled and your doctors have this handled. Mm -hmm. Your midwife has this handled. Mm -hmm. Your partner has this handled. Your doula. Your doula. Oh man. That, uh, for, for our first labor on, I loved our doula. She was like, she didn't actually, I didn't, you know. She, she didn't like massage my belly or anything like that, but just having her there yeah. and having somebody who could explain, like if we did have complications, having somebody who could explain what was going on, mm. uh, that's huge. Yeah. That I would, I would absolutely recommend that if you are scared, if you are, you know, at all afraid of the process of labor, you know, bring somebody along who has done it before mm-hmm. and can can just hold your hand and say, like, this is normal. Or hold your husband's hand. Or hold your husband's hand, as the case may be, and say, this is normal. Yeah. And you're going to be fine. There was definitely some, uh, if not physical hand holding, some emotional hand holding with me. Absolutely. Yeah. She got you like Gatorade and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was like, what's happening? Also, so in the in the course of my research mm-hmm. about labor fears, I actually learned that you can train for labor. No way. Yeah. You can train your body. You can train your muscles for labor. Do you wear like workout pants or? You can wear workout pants if you want to. I mean, I choose to wear workout pants like 90% of the time. That's true. Yeah. Uh, I kind of wish I were wearing workout pants right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, me too. Would just give me the option. Like I could be working out. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I'm like, I didn't get to it. But you know what? I had the option. Which makes me feel good. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, you can you can kind of train your muscles. You can train your 
abdominal muscles. You can train your lower pelvic muscles, huh. you know, and just make make it so that the process of labor is more uh, smooth, smooth, uh, efficient, efficient oh, is the word I'm thinking of. Efficient pusher. Make it so that the process is more efficient. Muscles. Yeah. So you can like get swole, bro. I suppose. Yeah. Get swole. Get, get swole. swole down there. <laughs> Guts. <laughs> well, all of you people listening who are going into labor, uh, first of all, uh, stop uh, listening and then maybe go. <laughs> no, I know. Anyone that's listening that uh, is thinking about becoming pregnant or uh, is pregnant and is has some labor fears, hopefully this allayed your fears. You got this. We believe in you. Yeah. You believe in yourself. You have to believe in yourself. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Your body is made for this. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to believe that. Yeah. And uh, bring snacks. Bring snacks. Uh, always good advice. Well, thanks everyone for listening. Be sure to subscribe and rate us five stars. Leave us a review. Let us know what you liked about the show. It helps other people discover the show. And uh, write us at babystepsadvice at gmail.com. Yeah. What other fears do you have? Did we make you more scared? Did we make you less scared? Mm -hmm. um, I really hope it was the latter. Yeah. But, you know, I do believe that there are people out there who were like, the fuck? I didn't know that happened. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Like I said, it's all about educating yourself. Mm -hmm. So now you are at least partially educated. That's right. By people who are... Not, Not qualified so to do that. <laughs> uh, we love you all. See you next Sunday.